M on January 2013. We start by reading through the question. We get the um, forces. So we have a uniform rod of mass 3 kilograms. That means we have to have a weight of 3G. It's resting against B, which means there must be a reaction force. And B is a rough wall. That tells us there must be friction. Friction opposes motion, so what way will the rod go? It will fall down the wall, so friction acts up. Rod is kept in limiting equilibrium by a light string, so we have to have tension in the string. Once we have the force diagram drawn, we can then worry about the question. And it's only now that I would go to reading the question. Straight away I can say I've already done part one, which is to draw the diagram. Part two then asks me to take moments about C. So I'm going to mark C on my um, diagram. Any force that goes through C will not have a moment, which means that T is not going to have a moment and the friction will not have a moment. Depends on how you've been shown how to do moments. If we start at C and we go down, the first force we meet is R, which is perpendicular. It is two meters down, which means that the moment about C is clockwise and it will be 2R. Next force we meet is the 3G. We still go down from C and the 3G is one meter along the rod. And what you've got to think about is this is the line of action and we're only interested in perpendicular distances. So I'm actually interested in this distance D. Now, if my right angle is here and the whole angle is 120 degrees, then this must be 30 and the length we are along it is one. So I can see that D is cos 30, which is root three over two. That means that the 3G will have an anti-clockwise moment of 3G times root 3 over 2. I can now bring these together. 2R has to equal 3G times root 3 over 2. So R will be 3G root 3 over 4, which is 12.7 newtons if you want to give a decimal answer. And that's the final part. We need to consider the forces that are acting vertically and the forces that are acting horizontally. We have friction and R and 3G. And what we need to consider is the tension. And I need to resolve the tension. If I have 120 degrees and this is an isosceles triangle, that means that this angle is 30, which means that this angle is 60. So resolving between the angle and the force gives me T cos 60 horizontally and T sine 60 vertically. So if I consider my vertical, I have that friction plus T sine 60 has to equal 3G. If I consider my horizontal, then R equals T cos 60. But we just showed that R was 3G root 3 over 4. So that tells me that the tension is 3G root 3 over 2. And I know that friction equals mu r. So friction would be 3g minus t sine 60. We have mu and we have r. This gives us 3g minus 3g root 3 over 2 multiplied by root 3 over 2 equals mu 3g root 3 over 4. On the left hand side I have 3G minus 
9j over 4, which simplifies to 3j over 4 equals mu 3j root 3 over 4. g's cancel, 4's cancel, 3's cancel, and that leaves me with mu equals 1 over root 3. Now when I was doing part 3, I worked exactly, and you can see that the mark scheme works exactly as well until the final answer, where they've given the decimal answer. At any stage in the question, you can use decimals rather than surge, but just be careful, you need to work to four significant figures until your final answer, which you give to three.